Hello hockey fans, Oddman Rush here, and welcome back to another video. Last weekend, I asked you guys to tell me who you think the most overrated player is in the NHL right now. This week, I thought we could flip the script and go to the complete opposite side of the spectrum, as I asked you guys to tell me who you think the most underrated player is in the NHL today. And you guys gave me a variety of different responses, a bunch of different players from across the league and various different teams, so let's take a look at who you suggested, shall we? First up, we have Kyla Morin on Twitter who says Kirby Dark. People don't put enough respect on his name. He is an amazing player and a great addition to the Montreal Canadiens. Now, while I don't necessarily agree that Dark is the most underrated player in the NHL, it's no secret that his move to the Montreal Canadiens has really jump-started his career this season. Obviously, a former third overall draft pick, he played with Chicago for several seasons, he had some injury issues while he was there and never quite found his form, still kind of rounding out his overall game and finding his place within the National Hockey League. But since he moved to Montreal to start the 22-23 season, he has gone in guns blazing. He really has become that kind of number two center option behind Habs captain Nick Suzuki. Obviously, they've been playing him on the wing at some points this season when they've been juggling the lines, but I think a, a one-two punch of Suzuki and Kirby Duck, if they keep trending the way they're supposed to over the next few seasons, the next half a decade, decade or so, the Habs are going to have a very powerful one-two punch down the middle for quite some time, and it will bring them back to being a competitive Stanley Cup uh, championship contending team. So yeah, I think Kirby Dark has really found the next gear in his game. It, it, it's, it's nice to see a, a guy that had a lot of expectation upon him finally reach it after going through a couple of seasons of up and down play. So yeah, Kirby Dark, he's a solid player, not the most underrated in the NHL right now, but still finding his rhythm and it's really good to see. Next up, we have that hockey girl Soph who says Keandre Miller. He is an amazing defenseman and right now is getting a point a game. I don't think he's the most underrated player in the NHL right now, and I'm a Rangers fan, so I'm not showing any bias here whatsoever. I want to look at this quite objectively. But Keandre Miller, similar to Kirby Dark, this season he really has taken the next step in his game. He's on a six or seven game point scoring streak, I believe, for the Rangers at the time of this recording, which obviously for a defenseman and a young defenseman is impressive enough. He's really using that long reach with his stick. Pretty much every single Rangers game that I've watched over the last couple of weeks, months or so, he, he's really stood out as one of the top blue liners for the Rangers, and that's including a blue line with Adam Fox and Ryan Lindgren, who are both solid as well. But it's kind of similar to Kirby Dark, he's definitely not the most underrated player, but he's a young guy that he's taken a few seasons to really find his form. Obviously, Miller was a first round pick in the NHL, uh, not quite first, second or third overall like Kirby Duck was, but he was still a premier pick in the draft. He was expected to pan out at the NHL level and boy has he panned out for the New York Rangers. If he keeps playing the way that he's playing for the next half a decade or so, the Rangers are going to have an absolute diamond with Keandre Miller. So yeah, once again, not the most underrated player in the NHL and I'm saying this as a Rangers fan, but he's a solid defenseman who really has stepped up this season, taken the next step in his game. And if things keep going the way they're going, he's going to be a solid blue liner for many years to come. Moving on to Thomas Fraser on Twitter, who says David Krejci. For a guy who's always been in the shadow of the other Boston Stars, yet led the team in playoff scoring twice. I actually really like this choice, Thomas. I think David Krejci is a guy that, within the Boston Bruins fan base and, and the Bruins media, he's obviously been a guy that's been loved for over a decade now. He's a guy that's been a heart and soul player for the team. He's bled black and gold for the Bruins organization for a very long time, the only team he's ever played for in the NHL. So to them, he's definitely not underrated. But has he necessarily earned the respect from the rest of the NHL fan base? I'm not entirely sure. Obviously, right now, he's towards the tail end of his career. So you could make the argument that right now, he's not necessarily underrated because, you know, he's on the tail end of his career. He's not necessarily the playoff leading scorer that he was during 2011 and 2013 and things like that. But at the same time, he hasn't really earned the respect from the rest of the NHL that I think he deserves because he's always been playing behind guys like Patrice Bergeron, Brad Marchand, Tuka Rask, Zdeno Chara, you know, those kind of guys that have been stalwarts for the Boston Bruins organization for, for years and years and years. I think David Krejci is a guy that definitely deserves more respect across the NHL. I think the fact that now he's towards the end of his career, he just recently reached the 1,000 game mark and scored three points in that game as well. I think he's now earning that attention from the rest of the league because a lot of people are realizing this might be some of the last 
David Krejci hockey we might ever see in the NHL. Obviously, his brief stint back home last season kind of made people think, oh, is this the end for David Krejci in the NHL? But he came back this season, kind of for the Boston Bruins' last dance. David Krejci, is he the most underrated player in the NHL right now? Not necessarily, but does he deserve a lot more respect across the NHL fan base, both for what he's doing this season and for the entirety of his NHL career? Absolutely. I, you got to put some respect on David Krejci's name, guys. Now we have Kira, who says Dylan Strome because he plays good hockey and no one talks about him. I think if you said this before this season, I wouldn't necessarily agree with you, but I think this year during the 22-23 season, Dylan Strome really has taken the next step in his game. Obviously, similar to Kirby Dark, a former third overall draft pick in his respective NHL draft, he started with the Coyotes, funnily enough, bounced to the Blackhawks where Kirby Dark was playing at the same time, and still he, he produced some good seasons, they were very respectable, but they weren't quite the third overall draft pick seasons that we were hoping for or definitely Chicago or even Arizona were hoping for. He then obviously moves to Washington this season, basically takes a one year bet on himself contract and boy has that paid off for him so far. He's really stood up as a reliable middle six player for the Washington Capitals, especially when Nicholas Backstrom was out with an injury for the first few months of the season. Kuznetsov and Strome were really the one-two punch for that team and whilst they're not leading the Metropolitan Division, they've helped them kind of hold the line and kind of stay in the fight as well. So Dylan Strome, he's not the most underrated player in the NHL. I, I don't think I agree with that statement so much, but he's definitely a guy that this season he stepped up. I think we've seen a couple of players so far that they've really broken out during this season and then people automatically think they're underrated because they've had their breakout year and people were betting against them the years before. However, I think that guys like Dark and Strome, they're guys that never really found their rhythm in the other places they were playing beforehand. They've shown that they, they're kind of rising to the occasion so far this season, but we're only about halfway through the 22-23 season, so they could completely go ice cold again for the rest of the year, or they could kick it up a notch and play even better, or they could play just as well during the second half. So I don't think it's fair to say that guys that have found their rhythm this season are the most underrated players in the NHL, because there's still half a season left to play. They need to back it up over an entire season. You can be a, a couple months wonder and have a couple of months of really solid play, but if you want to be known as one of, if not the most underrated player in the NHL, you need to back it up with more than that, at least in my opinion anyway. Next, we have Nathan Ormond, who says it's definitely Robert Thomas. He is having an amazing season for the St. Louis Blues. Now, Robert Thomas is a fantastic example of an underrated player in the NHL. Considering the numbers he's put up over the last couple of seasons, considering the role that he's playing for the St. Louis Blues, that whilst they might not be the Stanley Cup champions they were less than half a decade ago, they're still a decent team within the NHL this season. Robert Thomas, 23 years old, rising to the occasion as a, a productive scorer for the St. Louis Blues. He is a fantastic example of an underrated player in the NHL. He signed that lengthy contract with the Blues recently. He's going to be sticking around for quite some time. He's going roughly, if not over a point a game at the time of this recording. And he's really, he's really getting the job done for the St. Louis Blues. And what, what the Blues would have wanted from a guy like Robert Thomas, they can't have asked anything more. He really has risen to the occasion, and not just this season, but last season as well. You can really tell that since he basically turned 22, he's really found his rhythm in the NHL, whether it's the coaching style that works for him, the chemistry with his line mates, or just him realizing what he needs to do in order to become a very effective NHL player. Robert Thomas has done that, and and it's paid off for them. It's paid off for both him and the St. Louis Blues. So Robert Thomas, a fantastic example. I really like this one. He is an underrated player who does not get nearly as much media or fan attention and respect that he deserves, especially right now. So Robert Thomas, keep it up, buddy. You're doing great. On to the boy of 19 who says Josh Morrissey. He's been a solid part of the Jets blue line for a while now, and it seems like sports media never praises him. Yes, yes, and absolutely yes, boyer. In my mind, Josh Morrissey is one of if not the most underrated player in the NHL right now, and he has been for several seasons if you ask me. Obviously, when you look at the Winnipeg Jets roster, there are several key players that have been there for a while that you immediately think of. You go to Kyle Connor, Mark Scheifele, Blake Wheeler on forward, you go to Connor Hellebuck, the former Vesna winner in, in the crease and in goal, but when you look at their blue line, the only kind of notable player they've had for the last half a decade or so 
is Josh Morrissey. Obviously, they have some other solid blue liners in that core. There's a reason why they're sitting near the top of the league at the moment. But Josh Morrissey has been a guy that barely anybody talks about. He's been, he's an over a point a game defenseman this season. Last time I checked, he has 49 points in 47 games. As a blue liner, that's a very difficult thing to do, especially for half of a regular season. And the fact that because he plays in Winnipeg and because a lot of the media is centered towards the East, he doesn't get the respect that he deserves. He doesn't get the attention and the props that he deserves for his consistent play both this season and in the several years before, I think is absolutely criminal. I think Josh Morrissey is a guy that deserves more respect on his name. I think it's unfair if he goes down as a guy that was just kind of a good defenseman throughout his career. He's going down as a solid defenseman, a solid number one option who, during several tough seasons for the Winnipeg Jets before this year, he really carried the load on that back end. He ate a bunch of minutes and Connor Hellebuck for the Vesna Trophy play that he's shown over the years, if you don't have guys like Josh Morrissey in front, you don't go on those deep playoff runs. You don't have that that individual success. You don't have that team success. Josh Morrissey is a guy, whether he's modest or not, I don't know, but he deserves more praise, both from the media, both from fans, and from the hockey world in general. That guy is an all-star. He's a solid defenseman. He knows how to put up points. He knows how to defend the crease. He knows how to help his team win night in, night out. So Josh Morrissey, you are definitely one of, if not the most underrated players in in the league you deserve more respect absolutely and ultimately, we have Matthew on Twitter who says Miko Rantanen. He is single-handedly keeping the avalanche alive right now. This is a really interesting pick, actually, because to most people, I would imagine that Miko Rantanen is regarded as a top 25 or maybe even a top 10 scorer across the entire NHL. However, does he earn that level of respect from fans, the media, and the league as a whole? I'm not necessarily sure that he does, actually. Obviously, the Colorado Avalanche, they've been hit with a myriad of injuries so far this season. Just key guys going out left, right, and center. But Mikko Rantanen seems to be the one steady presence in the top six that has remained all year long. And he's managed to get the job done, score goals, put up points, keep that steady presence there in order to help the Avalanche remain in the hunt for a playoff berth halfway through the season. So, obviously, it's not a one-person team or whatever, but Mikko Rantanen has been that steady presence that as guys are coming in and out, he's still there to put up solid numbers. And the guy scored over a point a game over his entire NHL career so far. I don't think you can say that this guy isn't a good player or he isn't a productive scorer and he just won the Stanley Cup with the Colorado Avalanche last season. I think this guy deserves a little bit more respect on his name from the wider a hockey fan base. However, I think Colorado Avalanche fans know exactly what Miko Rantanen is. I think they very adequately rate him. However, the rest of the league, because he's playing alongside guys like Gabriel Landeskog, and because he's playing with uh, Nathan McKinnon, who the, over the last few seasons has really exploded with his game and taken that next step to be kind of superstar caliber type of player, I think Miko Rantanen is kind of in McKinnon's shadow a little bit, Add in Kale McCarr as well, and a lot of the discussion around the Avalanche from the wider fan base is obviously McKinnon and Kale McCarr. So yes, there could be an argument here, I think, that Mikko Rantanen is one of the more underrated players in the NHL. However, is he underrated in, at the same level as somebody like Josh Morrissey is? I don't think so. Is he maybe one of the more underrated guys? Yeah, I think there's definitely an argument you can make there, but he's not the most underrated in the NHL. So Mika Rantanen, solid player, deserves a little bit more respect and a little bit more attention, but I think most people know that he's a great player, you know? And finally, we have Yindrich Pavelka. God, I really hope I pronounced your name right. I'm really sorry if I didn't. Who says David Kampf. In my opinion, the best defensive forward in the league, and if it is needed, he can produce some points too. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, buddy. Let's pump the brakes just a little bit there. I don't think David Kampf is the most underrated NHL player right now, and I think if you asked every single other fan who isn't for the Toronto Maple Leafs, they would say the exact same thing. Obviously, David Kampf is a solid player. He has really found a role with the Leafs over the last couple of years, especially this season, but he is definitely not the most underrated player in the league. In fact, I think quite the opposite. I think the fact that he plays for the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Leafs get so much media attention, both from the outlets in Toronto and across the NHL, 
he's become slightly overrated. I think he makes a couple of good plays a game and now everyone suddenly thinks he's a Selkie winner. Like a couple of other people mentioned David Kampf as well. I'm sorry, Toronto fans, but you need to stop overhyping your guys. David Kampf is a solid middle six slash bottom six forward. Like you said, he's a solid defensive player. He can put up points when required. He's been pretty clutch in a couple of the Maple Leafs recent playoff runs, although the team didn't necessarily play very well around him. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's the most underrated player in the league. Just because he's not getting respect from the rest of the NHL doesn't mean he's underrated. Yeah, David Kampf, I'm sorry, you're not the most underrated. Could you deserve a little bit more respect across the NHL fan base? Maybe but I think you could also deserve a little bit less hype from Toronto as well. No disrespect to you, Yindrich, but Toronto fans really need to stop overhyping their own players, don't they? Now, I've got to be honest, I'm really glad that nobody mentioned Alexander Barkov here because, oh my God, I would have gone on an absolute rant about that player. Don't get me wrong, Alexander Barkov is a brilliant hockey player. He's been an absolute solid addition to the Florida Panthers and he's led that team very well for the last couple of seasons. Plus, but if everybody agrees for the last half a decade that a single player is the most underrated player in the NHL, that player's no longer underrated. He's adequately rated. Alexander Barkov is rated, ladies and gentlemen. Let's stop saying that he's underrated because if everybody agrees, he's not underrated anymore. And on that note, I'm going to end today's video. That was a look at some of your suggestions for the most underrated player in the NHL today. What do you guys think about some of the players that we looked at or the opinions that I provided when we went through them? Do you agree with what I have to say? Do you completely disagree? Or can we meet somewhere in the middle? Like I say with all of these videos, you are perfectly welcome to disagree with what I have to say. That's what makes these types of videos fun because we can debate it and, and have a conversation. Maybe we change someone's opinion or maybe we solidify our own opinion. I love talking about this stuff and I love hearing your guys' responses. Do let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you have another suggestion for a topic for this type of video as well, do let me know in the comments. I wanna hear what you guys have to say. But thank you very much for watching guys. I do hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Bexy93, Burned Retinas, Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Raquel, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.